the the knowledge and the um, the expertise of our staff uh, with you this evening. So tonight you'll get to meet a few of them um, as we get going. So one little caveat: I'm going to jump off here. It's my daughter's birthday, so once I'm done with introductions, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit and leave you in the capable hands of the the rest of the staff here. Um, but first, some quick introduction introductions. Excuse me. So the freshman counselor is uh, Mrs. Vicki Evans. So she's with you this evening. So you, your students will have her for the next four years. We rotate counselors through the grade levels. Um, our other counselor is Mr. Rex Basting. So Rex, you wanna, you wanna say something so they can see you? Hello. So this year Rex is 10th and 11th grade and he'll, he'll move up um, and rotate next year as well. Also with us this evening is our College and Career Center Specialist, uh, Lacey Guest. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so they'll be taking you through the bulk of the information this evening. Um, we also have some teachers here this evening that will help provide some insight and in, um, how to be successful in your ninth grade year. So you'll, hear, you'll meet them more formally later, but we have with us tonight um, Ms. Sarah Cunningham of our math department. We have um, Mrs. Sarah Leonard from our English department. And we have Mr. Ricardo Flores from our Career Technical Education Department. And they will, um, they'll pop in later because they'll, they'll be talking to you directly here in a few minutes. So you get to meet them. Um, and last but not least, we have the rest of the administrative team. So we have um, Mr. Chris Wells. He's one of our assistant principals. Hi, everyone. How's it going? We have one of our other assistant principals, Mrs. Tammy Sandifer. Nice to meet you. And then lastly, we have our um, athletic director and assistant principal combination. That's Mr. Matthew Myers. Good evening. Thanks for being here. So with that, I'm going to kick it over to the team to kind of kick us off. And we got a little video to launch it, it looks like. OCG. Welcome back, Cottage Grove. Welcome back. Hey, CGHS. Welcome back, Lions. This year is going to be a little bit different. Things are going to look a little different. Things are going to look a little bit different this year. And I know that we will get through this together. I'm looking forward to getting back in the groove with y'all in a little bit. I'm so excited to be joining the Lion family, and I can't wait to meet everyone and have an awesome year. Good to see ya. I'm your new assistant principal, Mrs. Sandifer, and I can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to get going. I'm so excited to get to know you and have fun through this year. Let's have a great 2021 school year. We can't wait to see you guys, even if we are starting online. Welcome to the school year. I'm excited to meet everybody. Just looking forward to getting back to athletics. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Hope you had a great summer, and I can't wait to meet you. And get yourself prepared for some distance learning, and let's get rolling. I'm so excited to see you next week, and I just need you to know that you are not alone. We will get through this together. I know that we will get through this together. Welcome to the 2021 school year. Welcome back, Lions. Welcome back, Lions. See you Monday. See you then. Go Lions. Go Lions. All right, Tammy, I think that's it. Tammy, unmute. Next, we're going to be hearing from um, our freshman team about freshman success. Then we will move into Lacey, who will tell you a little bit about our college and career uh, department. We will hear from uh, Mr. Flores um, for our CTE department. Um, Chris will be telling us about attendance, communication, um, hacking grades. Uh, 
Vicki will tell us about some graduation requirements um, and some, um, I guess I skipped Matt, sorry. Matt, you will be telling us about some connections um, and I'll be going through um, expectations online, in progress reports and some parent teacher conference information. Rex will be telling you about food resources and who to contact when you call us at the, the um, high school. And then as always, we're gonna end with uh, questions because we are here to uh, be a resource for you. So first up, I think we'll be hearing from our freshman team. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Cunningham and I teach math and I've taught math now at Cottage Grove High School. I think this is my 14th year back at CGHS. I'm a CGHS grad. Um, I just wanted to fill you guys in on a little bit of things that we've already seen in the last couple of weeks and try and help parents know where their students should be in math. First, everyone should have gotten this lovely journal. You can pick them up at the high school if you've not picked one up for your child. They're full of graph paper and that's really handy for us to use um, in class for notes. We provide some notes live, we also have recorded several videos of notes that students should be watching and accessing via Google Classroom. Those are on demand, they can watch them at any time, and they do get participation points for watching those videos. We use for independent practice both typical worksheets and average things that your student would have done in regular in-person school. They need to be doing that on lined paper taking a photo and submitting those assignments via Google Classroom. One thing I am noticing a lot is that students click turn in and they don't actually attach any evidence of work. I can't grade a turn in button, so please make sure that if your student has turned in all the assignments, that they actually are submitting work to me and not just clicking that button to say I did it. The last way we're having students practice this year is through an online software called deltamath.com. Um, and that's really nice. It gives students immediate feedback. They know if they're right. They know if they're incorrect. It offers video help if you need help right then and there on that particular problem. And it also provides feedback on how a student should have solved the problem right then and there for that student whenever they are doing that work. That work is graded by me. I then put it into Home Access Center, which it sounds like someone else will talk about. All of my grading and all of the math department grading will be completed in Home Access Center only, so you will not see any actual grades in the Google Classroom. You will need to actually go into the Home Access Center profile. That's where we turn in our grades to the district, and the district then passes that on to the state. So that's where I need to keep an official grade book for everyone to be able to communicate around. The math department is trying to keep all grades accurate as of Wednesdays, so they should be as accurate as they can be today. Um, I know I personally have two worksheets to get through, which I'm gonna do as soon as I am finished here. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm sure admin will answer or they will pass them on to me. And I'm gonna let Sarah Leonard begin, and if you have questions, you can type them into the chat, and I'll stay on for a few more minutes. Thanks, Sarah. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Leonard, the one of the ninth grade language arts teachers. This is the start of my fifth year at Cottage Grove, and I have just each year grown to love it more and more and more. Um, and I feel like we have some of the best students and staff here um, in, like Kevin said, the whole West Coast. So I want to talk to you guys about ninth grade language arts a little bit. A lot of it is pretty similar um, to math in many ways, which might be kind of shocking, but um, in language arts, they should also have a comp book. We did ask students to get these on their own, but this is where we will be taking notes as well. This is where we'll take notes from live sessions, those synchronous days on Mondays and Tuesdays, and also where students will take notes from pre, uh, like recorded videos on their asynchronous days, Thursday, Friday. So if you check in with your ninth grade student, there should be a table of contents at the front, and they should have about six entries in there. Um, already from stuff we've been working on. So that is kind of the go-to for notes and reference because we know that Google Classroom gets um, pretty full, especially going on a full semester. And so they have this easy comp book that's organized with different sections. 
table of contents where they can always go back and reference notes that we've taken. A uh, similar situation to what uh, Sarah Cunningham discussed is students just turning in a blank assignment. So if you're able to, if you are checking in with your student um, and they say, yeah, look, I turned it in, here's the check mark, actually have them click on the Google Doc and open it and uh, show you what they wrote. Sit down, have them read it to you, um, go over it with them. Their writing, I am super impressed already by some of the creative writing that the ninth graders have been doing. So not only is it fun, but it also kind of has that check, uh, double check for them that they are actually doing the work. For grading, we will put the assignment grades in Google Classroom and we will leave a lot of comments on the documents because that's one of the uh, kind of the positives of technology is we can give writing feedback a lot faster. So I always encourage the students to open the Google Doc, not just look at the grade because we have put comments in there, um, kind of guiding them or giving them feedback on their writing but you'll have to check Home Access Center for the overall grade. So Google Classroom will only show you like on one paragraph that they got nine out of 10. Home Access Center will show you that they have a B plus in the overall in the whole class. So that's pretty important. Um, I think that someone else will touch on attendance a little bit later, um, but that attendance form is at the top of all the ninth grade language arts classrooms. I think it's probably at the top of everybody's Google Classroom. So that's really important. And then the last thing I just want to share is that if you're supporting your student and helping, if you look for the weekly calendar, that is the first thing posted under every heading of the week on Google Classroom. So if you look at week three, um, the big black heading, or I, sometimes it might be blue, this is week three, the first thing under it is the weekly calendar, and it literally says start here. So if you want to help support your student and you're like looking at this list of things, and you're like, oh my gosh, that is overwhelming, what to do? start here with the weekly calendar that will line up everything for each day of the week for the whole week of what they need to be working on so that is the best resource i've been encouraging students that if they have access to a printer even if it's in black and white to print out a physical copy of that calendar and treat it like a checklist um, each day that they go through to kind of act as a way to keep them on track so uh, same thing as other Sarah, <laughs> that I will stay on for a little bit longer. If you have any questions specific for language arts, you can type them in the chat and I'll, I'll try to answer them. And if something comes up later on, you're welcome to email me, um, let admin know, and they can pass it along to me as well. So thank you so much. I'll turn it back over to Tammy. I'll answer the question that just popped up in chat. Um, Home Access Center is a way for you to access your student records. So we have Teacher Access Center, that's where we do attendance, and we do grades, parents and students have access to Home Access Center. You'll get your login information and all of that, I think, in a bit. Um, we've been talking about that with our students and having them look at their grades. That's one of the things I worked with students on um, on Tuesday with the freshmen. So they should be fluid and know how to sign in, and you're going to learn how it sounds like in just a couple of slides. And next we'll hear from Lacey, who's gonna talk about our College and Career Center. Hi everyone, my name is Lacey Guest. I'm the College and Career Coordinator. Um, this is my third year at Cottage Grove High School, and it really is the best place to work and the best job. So um, I like to tell people I have the best job. I'm not in the classroom all the time, but I get to work a lot one-on-one -on -one with students. Um, primarily, I work with juniors and seniors uh, in helping them kind of develop and execute a post-high school plan. Um, but I do like to pop into the ninth grade parent nights just so you guys kind of know who I am and know that these resources are available to your students um, in the next couple of years uh, as they uh, decide exactly what they're going to pursue um, after high school, and then also if they need help finding um, jobs locally in the next couple of years. Um, so really quickly, I just like to mention that there are a couple of things that ninth graders can do um, right now um, to start planning for their future. And I know that they're probably a little overwhelmed with distance learning and a new school and new teachers. Um, and so I know that they're just adjusting uh, to high school, um, but just keeping these couple of things in mind as they progress through the next couple of years will really pay off well for them later. Um, it's never too early to start planning. Um, so first of all, I tell students, uh, volunteer. This is always um, a really great way to get some work experience uh, that you can include on a resume 
learning in the future. Um, and this is also uh, something that looks fantastic on college applications. So no matter what your student's plan is for their post high school uh, goals, uh, volunteering and putting in community service hours um, in the beginning stages of their high school career uh, will pay off for them later. Uh, the second thing they can do is get involved. Um, usually I say uh, participate in athletics and clubs, and I know that's a little bit more difficult this year, um, but definitely consider getting involved in whatever way they can uh, this year and next, um, because these things can also be added to resumes and job applications, um, college applications, and scholarship applications. Uh, getting involved and demonstrating that you uh, are passionate about something outside of the classroom uh, is always a really good um, thing to have uh, kind of on your uh, resume later. And lastly, I know you've probably heard this a lot uh, for parents that are here and also for kiddos that are listening in, uh, keep your grades up. Uh, this is super important. Um, it's never too early to uh, get good grades and kind of cultivate a really good GPA. Again, this does matter regardless of what your post high school plan is. Um, if you want to go into an apprenticeship program, uh, those are competitive and they want to see that you, uh, you know, did a good job uh, in keeping up with your grades in school. If you're going to a community college, a four year, the military, it does not matter what your plan is. Um, you will, uh, it will only behoove you to keep your grades up. Um, so those are just kind of a few quick things you can do uh, and keep in mind over the next year or two. Um, and I will uh, most likely see you guys, uh, well, virtually this year, but um, hopefully in the halls next year. Now we'll hear from Ricardo, who's gonna talk about CTE. Hi everybody, my name is Ricardo Flores. I'm the department head for CTE electives. So um, you might have heard CTE before, but it's career technical education. So um, it looks a little bit different this year, but I love being part of CTE because quite often, right, the students love to come. They love to be working in the wood shop, like to be working in culinary, like to be running the businesses. There's so many different opportunities for them. So um, it will be a little bit different this year, but as we progress, they're going to continue to have some really good opportunities. So CTE, just so you know, we're lucky. Um, we have nine programs of study. Um, they're state approved programs of study for the different CTE elective areas. And in a second, you're going to be able to meet those teachers. But we have electronic media, print media, computer science, health occupations, early childhood education, engineering technology, culinary, business and management, and cabinetry and construction. And I just have to tell you, I go to a lot of meetings um, in Lane County and meet with a lot of different schools, and we're lucky to have all the offerings that we do have. Um, you know, CTE is a great connectivity point for your student, so you should be uh, looking forward for them to be able to explore a little bit, get tied to some different programs. Um, just so you know all these programs because it's a state approved program every teacher has to have a special licensure a CTE licensure and then we go through a state approval program a process where we're working with colleges and post-secondary uh, partners industry partners we have to make sure we have two or three years of the flow for your student to go through to get to their next steps and it's always focused on high wage and high demand jobs so um, so they're gonna have a great experience and a lot of opportunities so you can see that there's a little video here. It's tough to get all different nine programs of studies, eight teachers on here. So we recorded ourselves and just did a small introduction to a few of the classes that we have. So once that's done playing, I'll be done. But uh, again, I'll be like the other teachers. If there's any comments or questions that you guys have, you can drop it in the chat and I'll answer those before I check out. Chris, I think we're ready. Oops. Sorry, it's getting away from me. I'm going to gonna have to back out for a second. My name is Ricardo Flores. I'm the business teacher here at Cottage Grove High School. Just want to introduce myself and let you know that um, I teach business classes here and that our career technical education program of study, a stated proof program, is for business and management. So 
your student is interested in taking anything that has to do with introduction of computers, um, entrepreneurship, marketing, playing virtual business simulations, meeting with local business people, running sports marketing and signage programs and their own local businesses here running or, uh, vending machines, then uh, this would be a great area for your student to enter into. All right, you guys all take care. Hello, parents. My name is Kent Russo. My program of study is woodworking, cabinetry, and construction. In this class, we'll teach your students how to safely use some woodworking machinery, how to build formal cabinetry for kitchens and bathrooms, and how to build some walls and things for houses. That's what we do here, so we'll look forward to seeing your students there. Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Ann Walker. I am part of the Cottage Grove High School pathway that we refer to as human resources. Mr. Joey Vanek and I are the two staff members that make up that program of study. Our area of focus in human resources is education and training with emphasis on early learning, which Mr. Joey Vanek handles, and an emphasis on teaching and training, which I handle. I teach the course called Teacher Cadet. Most students move into that course after they've taken the course in child development and early childhood education. Again, I'm Jerry Ann Walker and part of the program of study in human resources at CGHS. Hi, I'm Erin Royce up at Cottage Grove High School, and the CTE courses I teach are Art and Advanced Art. Hope to see you there. Hello, my name is Dylan Ferguson. I teach computer science. This includes Introduction to Computer Science, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A, Introduction to Game Development, Introduction to Mobile Applications Development, Introduction to Website Design and Development, Cybersecurity, and IT. These classes can earn the student college credit as well as Cisco certification. Hi everyone, my name is Joey Vanek and I teach both the culinary and the early childhood education pathways here at College Grove High School. The classes I teach include beginning, global, and advanced foods, culinary one and culinary two, child development, and early childhood education. Hi, I'm Kim Hansen and I teach graphic design and also the yearbook. Hi, my name is Chris Medina. I teach drafting, engineering, uh, if you are interested in going out into the uh, industry field, you want to take my uh, engineering and drafting courses. We will be talking about uh, the principles of engineering, and in drafting, we'll talk to you about going on to be an engineer in college. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Hutchins. I am the Health Science Pathways teacher at Cottage Grove High School. It is a two-year program starting junior year, and kids will complete medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, and medical office procedures. And now we'll hear from Chris, who will give you some more information about our school. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Wells. I think this is the start of my 17th year here at College Grove High School, so I'm rapidly becoming the old man. I'm definitely the old man in the office, but the old man around the high school. Um, just to let you know, um, everything that everybody said about the staff and the students in this community is absolutely true. So much so that 16 years ago, my wife and I moved here. Uh, she teaches over at Harrison, and uh, my kids go to school in this district. So that's that's how much I believe in all the people that are that are here tonight and that work at our school. Um, one of the main things that I do here is I work on attendance, and the attendance this week this year is a little weird. Um, so as you are already aware, we have the synchronized days or the sync days as we call it, and the asynchronized days or the async. So on the synchronized days, as you're probably aware, your kid has live classes with the teachers. And uh, they're going to be working with that teacher online for about 90 minutes. They might log off for a little bit, might come back on. But it's really important that they are there for all those synchronized classes. That's where we can deliver most of the content for the kids. They can get the most help. Um, with the async days, your, your student needs to check in online. There's a check-in form in every one of the classes. And it's right at the top of their classwork uh, in the Google Classroom. 
Uh, teachers may still have assignments for them or kind of self-led lessons um, and other things that they can do to continue and expand on the learning from the uh, synchronized days. Um, we are really hoping that families can avoid uh, their child missing school. And, and I guess, you know, while this has been a really crazy year and not what anybody expected, one of the plus sides is that um, if your student is sick but still well enough to work, they don't have to be absent. They can still work from a little bit, just communicate with the teachers. Likewise, we would hope that uh, you don't take trips during school, but if you do and your kid has internet access, they can still be present. So this is a really unique year to uh, be in attendance at school. So we're happy to work with you, but being in attendance, especially those synchronized classes are so important, especially with the two a day uh, and long semester. Um, if you do have uh, a need for your child to be gone, please call the office. Uh, the phone number's on the screen. Um, and uh, just let us know what's going on so we can, we can report it to the teachers. Once again, if your student is gone, it'd be best that they communicate with the teachers and let them know ahead of time or work with them to, to figure out what they missed. Um, likewise, um, all, record, all homework requests should go through the teachers. Now, uh, I will talk about home access in a minute, but I wanted to share some of those attendance marks that you will see in home access or hack, as we call it. Um, you'll see the absent ones are UNA, ill, med, or O for other. So those are just the different codes we, we use when uh, your student isn't there. The ones that kind of are a little stickier, the UNA, and those are the ones we try to avoid. So that means that your student was gone, nobody let us know why. So um, we have to report to that, that to the state as uh, unexcused absence. Um, this year we're using the code UT a little bit differently. This is usually in a regular year where you know, we get to see your kids in person. Uh, that means unexcused tardy. This year we're using it to code when your student misses a synchronized class, but checks in with the teacher after the class or later. Uh, according to state rules, they have 24 hours to check in with us and we have to mark them as present. But for our records keeping and for you as the parents, you can see that that kid wasn't in that synchronized class, but did check in. So not great that they missed it, but actually really great that they checked in. And once again, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I know Mr. Myers is watching it and we'll get to those at the end. I'm gonna flip to the next one. All right, so another unique advantage of this year is the communication. Uh, the district has purchased for every school in the district uh, the Remind app. You have probably already gotten a bazillion uh, text messages from us, good or bad, um, but we're using this as a way to directly contact you and you can directly contact us. So if you've given us your cell phone number, uh, we have you in the system and you, we have attached you automatically to your kit. So what that means is not only can we uh, see you, but you can see all the teachers. Let's say, oh, hey, you know, my, my kid uh, has a mistake in Mr. Wells's class. I know they turned in that paper, but it's not graded. Hey, send Mr. Wells a text, right? You can even pick up Remind and say, call this teacher. And so as long as it's through, during their office hours, um, they will get back to you. This is a super fast way for us to, to get a hold of each other. A little bit faster than email, especially seeing as not everybody uh, checks their, their emails, especially if your inbox looks like mine. Um, if, you, if you aren't signed up for Remind, uh, there's two things you can do. If you text that number with that phrase that's right now on the screen, you will join the College Grove High School Remind. This means you'll get any of our big broadcast messages. It means we also have your number if there's a, an emergency or a snow day because we will send out notifications through that. But likewise, if you think we don't have your cell phone number, please call us. Um, and, and we'll make sure to get your cell phone number attached to your student and then the next day at noon, it will automatically sync you and you will automatically be at it. It's super easy and I'm hoping that we'll be able to do attendance notifications automatically here in, uh, sometime soon. As well as you can always email us, teachers will emails and my email and everybody on here's email is on the website. Um, so feel free to email us. Um, typically with email, you'll get a response within a day. With a reminder, you might get it a lot quicker. All right, so one thing that's a lot different from middle school to high school is grades. So what would happen in, in middle school if you fail the class, you still got to go on to seventh grade. Or if you fail the class, you still got to go on to eighth grade. The rules are a little different here. You can still go on to the next grade, but we do what is called credits. So when you pass a class, which is a D and above, you earn a credit. And so we, I believe, and Vicki and Rex can correct me, I think we have about 75 credits that a, that a student needs to, to gain in their 12 years. If, if a kid passes every class, super easy. They're, they're gonna be good. 
good to go. We have a little bit of wiggle room for kids to make those mistakes. And you know what? Freshman year is that year that kids make mistakes because this is a different system. So if they fail a class or they look like they're failing the class, just contact us and we'll help you get things figured out. But grades are uh, gonna, all grades are going to be on transcripts. So with these transcripts, we send them to colleges. We'll send them, uh, get them ready for uh, scholarship applications. And as Lacey said earlier, um, these are really important when we start looking at trade schools and apprenticeships because uh, there are some really good opportunities for kids who are inclined to be an electrician or a plumber or construction, something like that, where they can go out and um, do a couple of years of apprenticeship and then move into a career that's quite profitable. Um, Likewise, uh, one of the ways you can stay on top of grades is by using home access. And I know there was a question earlier. So we have a, a bit.ly link right there on, uh, on the screen. You can also find this on our web page. It's right there on that main first page. You'll see where it says home access. And so the, once you're in home access, you'll be able to see grades. You'll be able to see attendance. You can even contact teachers through email. So you can just click on the teacher and send them a, a quick little message. This is a, a really quick way to see what's going on. It is updated right away. So if teacher marks uh, your kid's assignment done, you will see it right away. Um, only things you need to get into your kid's uh, account is their first initial and last name for the username, as you can see on the screen, and then the password, and this one's a little tricky, is their student number plus their eight-digit birthday. So I gave an example right there. If you're having any problems getting into home access, it's not working, just call us. Uh, I know the counselors are really good at, uh, at helping parents get into this and they can help with passwords and every, everything like that. And I think that might be it for me, but please throw some questions in the chat. I will try to answer them as we go along. And yeah, I think it's Vicki now. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm so glad you could make it. Um, I'm Vicki Evans. I've been in the district more than 20 years. Um, and recognize a lot of your last names, so I might have had older siblings throughout the years. I'm getting to the point where I'm actually even having some parents that were my students um, years and years ago. So I'm glad you could all make it. I just briefly want to go over graduation requirements. This year's looking different only because of COVID. So this year, students only need to have 75 credits. When your students come through, four years from now, it may be different. We may go back to where we were, where students not only need credits, but they need to pass the state standards, the state testing, which we, we refer to as SBAC testing. We'll look into that more um, your sophomore and junior year of your student. But for right now, the important thing to know on this chart is just that students need to accumulate those credits in certain subject areas. We don't have a vast credit recovery program. So if students don't pass, sometimes it's very difficult to find ways to have them catch up. Um, most kids don't like summer school. We've been able to provide that in the past. So I'm really urging you to help your students stay on top of it right now so that they're able to get through with their credits and not have to look at alternative ways of earning those credits. The other thing I want to mention, and um, please feel free to call, email me with any questions, anything you have. But on the next slide, I just want to mention an opportunity for your students. So U of O, and not that your student needs to be going to U of O, but they have a summer program every year that's fantastic. And it gets students onto a college campus. They take some classes. They eat in the cafeteria. They just kind of feel what it would be like to be on a college campus. And again, they don't have to be going to U of O, they can be looking at any school. But the SAIL program now has a year long program since we're on distance learning. So if you want more information, you can just um, either email me or just Google SAIL U of O. And it's kind of a good place to start for kids. So again, if you have any questions throughout the next few weeks, always feel free to give me a call or email me. And I'm glad you're here tonight. Next, we'll hear from Matt. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Myers. Um, this is my second year at College Grove. It's my 16th year as an educator. Uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about clubs and athletics. And as was mentioned previously, it is uh, a bit limited this year. Um, right now, we're in what we call season one. Um, there's no contests. Um, 
due to due to COVID, traveling and um, getting kids from different schools together is, is is quite difficult. So right now we have basically after school practice um, in a few different time slots. We just ask um, that that you follow some protocols and that um, you sign up on family ID. So you would be doing it as if you were competing in a normal um, sports season, but there's no athletic fees attached. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, your kids are already doing, that's great. We want to keep them fit. We want to keep them doing stuff. It's I think it's super important that we keep kids doing stuff. So when sports come back, they're fit and also for their, you know, their mental health to get out and do stuff. So that is happening now. Uh, it's just, it just looks a bit different. Um, the um, OSAA, the body that governs high school athletics has moved our winter sports in what they call season two. That starts December 28th and goes from March 6th. That's a little bit later and shorter than most um, most years, but that includes wrestling, basketball, and swimming. Um, that will be that is going as planned as of now. Uh, we will definitely be sending out updates if we get to you know November or early December and the metrics aren't where we need them to be. Um, that may change. But as of right now, that's the plan. Uh, same goes for season three, which was tra our traditional fall sports. They've moved to that late winter, early spring window, um, cross country, volleyball, soccer, football, and water polo. Again, same as, same as season two, it could get changed, but as of right now, that's the plan. Um, and then spring sports, um, April 19th to June 26th, those traditional spring sports and golf, um, baseball, softball, and track. Um, Again, we're going to try to get those going. I feel more optimistic, to be honest, about spring sports because um, they're outside and we obviously have more time um, between now and then to get those things going. Um, just a point of clarification, and I, I missed this. I should have uh, caught this on the uh, slide. We do not have tennis. Um, so um, I'm sorry for you uh, tennis enthusiasts out there. We actually don't have tennis. Um, cheerleading is, 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 is sort of going right now. They're, they're participating in conditioning and that's a unique season because it goes across two kind of two seasons. Um, the cheer coach right now is trying to get some stuff set up to do some competitions where they can videotape, um, their, their performances and send them in. If, if, if you have a student who's interested in cheer and has more questions about that, please email me. Um, because they're trying to kind of work around things, but right now it's kind of difficult. Um, traditional cheer competitions are, are considered contact sports, so it's kind of difficult. Um, and band and choir, again, that's that's going. We've handed out instruments. Um, those are classes taught here at the school, um, and we're doing those virtually for now. We're working to try to get some of the kids in, if possible, to do some in-person stuff with band and choir. But again, right now, due to the metrics, that's proven uh, pretty difficult. Um, you can see at the bottom there the family ID link. If you're interested in any of this stuff, um, please go on family ID and register. Right now we're not charging fees. We ask that you fill out a COVID waiver, that you have proof of insurance and a physical, um, you know, so that we have all the paperwork we need to keep the kids safe, but um, no fees at this time. So please, please don't let money be a, uh, a barrier to getting involved in this stuff. I think it's, um, it's super, you know, obviously I'm the athletic director, so I'm biased, but I think this stuff is super, super, super important to help feel kid, kids feel connected to the community. I think roughly half of our student body does a sport and even more do a sport or a club. Um, and I, I really think it helps kids. It's a great compliment to academic success. So, and thanks again for being here, guys. I know this is a, sort of a unique situation. I appreciate you being here and being engaged. Thank you, Matt. And I'm Tammy Sandifer, one of the new assistant, the new assistant principal, and I'm going to take you through the next few slides. We wanted to talk to you about the student expectation um, and what it means for digital citizenship. We ask that when your students come into the synchronous classes, that they have their um, microphones muted and that they come in um, and follow teacher directions. The synchronous um, classes are 90 minutes long. So usually the teacher will greet them. They will usually do a classroom activity and then the teacher could release them for a time period. But they will always ask them to check back in at the end of class. Um, so that's kind of that expectation. Um, we've asked that your students refrain from taking pictures of other students. 
just to keep um, each other's privacy. We also um, are asking for your assistance um, to help minimize distractions. So backgrounds, your students have the capability to blur their background. They also um, try to minimize side talking, um, other activities like video games, TV, cell phone use, those types of things. The other thing I wanted to point out is the picture of the ARC manual. Um, that is the real cover that you will see from South Lane. Um, this is a partnership. We're in this together. And we're asking for your help to help us create distraction-free, um, optimal learning environments for your student success. The ARC handbook is the one that talks about all of the digital citizenship and, and the guidance for your student for the, the comprehensive distance learning. And there are hard copies available at the high school. All you have to do is just come by and ask for one and we're happy to provide it. Next slide. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our in-progress reports and the upcoming uh, parent-teacher conferences. So as Chris had stated earlier, your students are completing work for letter grades. Those letter grades come together and they calculate what's called a GPA or a grade point average. Um, we like to keep you in the loop so we will be communicating with you. The in-progress reports are your way to know how your student is doing throughout the term. The first in-progress report or IPR is coming out next week. It'll be October 21st. Those are going to be mailed and they should be available on Hack. After that, the next date that you need to know is that parent-teacher conferences are coming up on October 28th and 29th. Those are gonna be over Google Calendar and we will be sending out a postcard and I have made a video for you that should um, that will have posted. So you'll see when you accept the invitation to your teacher's um, Google Calendar, what it will look like, how you will schedule yourself into an appointment, and then the next steps. I'm gonna pass it over to Rex. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will try to make these next slides pretty quick. Um, so the food and the, the food is continuing. It's been going on since uh, last spring. Um, but if you guys are interested in picking up school lunches and or breakfast, they come together. This is a great option. And I do want to say that um, you don't have to worry about taking food away from other kids. I know people have told me that they didn't want to take food away, but there's enough food for everyone. So if you'd like your kids to get the school lunches, um, you can pick them up at the high school, Lincoln Middle School, or Al Kennedy at those times. And it is a, a, a great way to save a little money for you guys. All right, next one. And with these resources, again, I'm not going to go over all of these, but there are some really important resources on this page. Um, the top one, the ARC Handbook, you may have already heard about that, but if you have any questions about Google Classroom, um, look it up on the ARC Handbook. It answers just about everything you might want to know. Um, also on there, uh, the, the emails for staff. If you have questions, uh, please email staff. That's the best way to get a hold of them right now. Um, and then the other ones, you can check these all out later once this gets sent home. And my last page is who should I contact? So I would say it probably goes in about this order, starting with Mrs. Evans because she is the freshman counselor. Um, next on the list is uh, Mr. Wells and Ms. Sandifer. They are the administrators for the ninth grade. And then down the line, um, one, one note there is the attendant secretary, Ms. Cravello. If you do plan on being gone for an extended amount of time and you will not have internet service where they could log in, please call and let the school know. Um, and then otherwise, if you have any questions, I am available also. Again, I'm the sophomore and junior counselor.
And then because you're new to our school, we put together a virtual school tour so that when we're back in person, and if you have to come by the school, you'll know uh, where to go for help.
So one quick thing about that video, and I'm kind of proud to say that uh, that was made by a, a student teacher of ours, Jane Tucker, who is going to be student teaching this year. But he was also a College Grove High School graduate, and he learned to do making movies like that here at College Grove High School in our electronic media class. So if that's a thing that you think your student might be uh, interested in, they should definitely sign up for that class. So that's my that's my one pitch. Now we wanted to open the floor up for any questions that you might have. So as you go do that, please type them in the chat. Sometimes it, it can be kind of uh, cumbersome talking over everybody, but if you throw some questions in the chat, we'll take them on and uh, give you our best answer. And if we don't know, uh, we'll get back to you on it. Well, I don't see any questions. So on behalf of all of us, I want to say welcome to our pride. We are very lucky that you are now part of our school and welcome. <laughs> I guess we're gonna wrap it up now. I still don't see any questions, but if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to us afterwards. Yep, and I'm gonna stick around for a bit. So if anybody has questions after this, I'm happy to stick around. I'll, I'll hang with you too, Vicki. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks Hope to see you soon. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for being here. So to get on home access, actually, I can walk you through if you're okay with that. Let me stop presenting and I will uh, pull up another screen and I will just show you. I'm going to present my screen again if that's okay. If it, if it allows me to. So Vicki, can you see that okay? Yes, I can. Okay, yep. so if you go to our, our front page, it's just our main uh, webpage. I get to it just by searching CJHS in Google. But if you go down, you'll see right here, it says home access. So I'm going to click that. And then the links right here, as well as the, the username and, and password requirements are right there. So uh, your student uh, has all the information you need to, to get into it. It's just their first initial, last name for their, for their username, and then it's student number and their full eight-digit birthday. So if the, their birthday is the, the 1st of January of 06, it would be 0101-2006. Um, if that doesn't work, give us a call. Call Vicki. Uh, someone will help you get into home access. Any other questions out there? It really seems like we should have some music piped in, like you hit a button and there's music piped in, you know, while you're, while people are waiting, like you're on hold. Yes. You know? I could sing for you. No? Let's not punish the people, please. Could we run it like the gong show? Mm -hmm. Where he does it and then we just bong him if we don't or we can grade him.
Well, I don't see anybody having 